So I learned a little bit more about what that other bonus plant is, and I definitely mispronounced it. Um, it's an Italian word. It's riccia, I think is how it's pronounced. Still might not have pronounced it right, but these are, the little guys are riccia water spangles. I think they're like purple laced water spangles, which is a rare, um, one of the more rare floating plants. So that's pretty cool. So I feel like I really got my money's worth now because I got my water lettuce for $17 and then I got a decent amount of the bonus uh, water spangles, which are really a cool plant. I hope they'll propagate for me. I never have really good luck with uh, floating plants, but I think that's usually because I have too much water movement. So in this tank, I don't have any water movement just so that I can make sure that they're getting established and I made sure that the light is like shining right on them because they do require quite a bit of light and then hopefully they'll start, you know, flourishing in here. I am going to make some changes to this tank because this is where my neons currently are and after doing a little bit more research on neon tetras, they actually do better in black water tanks and with lower light. So right now, obviously there it's not a black water tank and I don't even have any wood in here at all or any like leaves in here at all. And the light is pretty strong for them. So when I set up the quarry tank, cause I have to redo that today, uh, Corridora is also like more of a black water tank so I'll probably end up incorporating some driftwood in there for them, incorporating some uh, mango leaves or catapa leaves so that we can get um, a kind of that tea colored <clears throat> black water tank that they, or black water that they like so that they do better. They're not doing bad or anything, but I just want them to make, I just want to make sure they're in <clears throat> conditions that are for them you know it's important to me that I keep them in good conditions that they that suit them the best and another thing that I found with these guys is they like a lower pH and I think all of my pH because my tap water is naturally hard water so I think I do have a higher pH I am gonna test that right now just to see where I'm at with this water um but yeah, I'm going to also focus on maybe, well, it should naturally be lowered when you have, uh, the pH of your water will naturally come down if you incorporate um, like driftwood and catapa leaves and things that will uh, release tannins into your water. So that's probably why they like that. They also like hiding more hiding places so in my new tank that I'm gonna set up I'm gonna have more hiding spots for them and just make them feel a little bit more comfortable like they're not hiding at all in here they've been swimming all around they're not like they don't seem bothered by it but you know they could also be doing better and uh, I heard it's really difficult to breed neon tetras just, you know, for the standard aquarium hobbyists like myself, but I feel like that would be a good goal to have, is to breed the tetras and breed my quarries. I did have success breeding my quarries. Two of the corridors that I have are actually ones that I hand raised. So I just, it's hard to collect their eggs uh, because the Corridoras will lay them and the other ones will come up and eat them immediately. <laughs> so you have to watch them and have everything prepared to scoop the eggs out. And then you have to have a certain uh, tank for the eggs. And then you have to make sure that it has enough, you know, just everything that comes along with breeding. Um, but I did have success with them. I just haven't tried to breed any more since then. But I might have the goal of trying to breed these guys too. I just need to do more research on that and make sure their setup is ideal. 
But yeah, I'm going to test their pH and I'll let you guys know what the pH is. I'll actually show you because I have the master test kit. I'm going to do the low range pH and then the high range pH. So I'm going to do that now. Alright, so this is my low range pH. So yeah, we're definitely at about like a 4 or a 7, 7, 6 for that one easily. So for the high range uh, pH, we're at about, I would say about an 8.2. So yeah, that's definitely a higher pH than these guys prefer. Um, so I'm going to have to try and bring that down a little bit for them just to make sure they're in ideal, in their ideal parameters and We'll work on that today. I like. I still have to go to the store and get some things. So I already have like driftwood that I'm not using. So when I set up the new tank, and I'll show you guys that later, I'm gonna go ahead and incorporate some driftwood. I really wanted that tank to be like a beachy vibe tank, like um, sand and like some grass, like uh, dwarf hair grass in there to give it kind of like a beach vibe. But we might have to go with something else unless I just decide to keep these guys in here and turn this into a black water tank, which maybe I'll end up doing that instead. But um, I uh, have to keep sand in the quarry tank because they love digging in the sand. I couldn't take their sand away from them. They like forage in there and it's adorable watching them dig in there. So I'm definitely sticking with the, the sand. Um, but yeah, well, and then of course plants cause they love plants as well. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I'll let you guys know, but definitely going to be making some changes to their tank and I'll probably end up getting two more, um, neons today because I only have four in here and I feel like sometimes they do pick on each other. And I heard that if you have a little bit more, um, a larger school of them that they're less likely to do that and then of course I need to get like more hiding spots and everything but yep hope you all are having a great day and uh, take care